Hey, yo, what is going on with it once again? Bros, women, bronies, and pegasus is the one and only, of course, Mr. Nintendo Sony Free 2011, a.k.a. Criticism Guide 2009. You guys know the rest. And, of course, before I begin, as always, if you want to grow your, um, your channel views, your video views, get, gain more subscribers, and, of course, get your channel banner professionally done, definitely check out um, the obviously one, TroubleNetworkStudios.com, and, of course, FreedomNetwork.com. To help you grow out everything you want and um, best partnership to have <laughs> thus far but uh yeah anyways before i begin small little quick thing i wanted to tell you guys um this these three things have nothing to do at all they don't pertain anything they have no relation to the top five thing i'm, I'm about to like explain to you as you can see in the video description up above and below the title but um i just finished drinking some really awesome ocean spray cranberry juice really good stuff you know mm. It's the best. Good stuff. It's a little sour on the sour side, but still, nevertheless, bad ass, badass, you know. <laughs> B.A., whatever you want to call it. Anyway, um, anyways, excuse me, there was that. And then I got this really amazing, real kick butt, amazingly, deliciously tasting chorizo um, beef jerky stick. Really good stuff, you know. Highly recommend you try this stuff out, especially in the West Coast. I doubt that they have these on the East Coast or Midwest unless you go to Amazon and pre-order them. I don't know. Real good stuff. Super awesome, amazing snack stick, as you can see there. So if you're, if you're ever in the West Coast or Southwest, you know, especially if you're in a lot of Hispanic neighborhoods, definitely pick this up. Highly recommend that. And then the last but not least, um, I actually got this really, really cheap at Spencer's, like $4.99, like 5 bucks. so... This is where I'm going to be writing all my videos and like my stuff for my IDs in the near future. Or the far future, who knows. Um, as you can see, it's got Green Lantern, Batman, Superman, all the DC characters. I actually like these two the most. Bat Superman, I was never really crazy about, but Batman and Green Lantern, they were badass to me, in my opinion. And with that said, um, yeah, let's begin. So this is the top five greatest anime characters of all time, in my opinion. And the, the best ones that have the best weapons and best attacks. So, um, I actually got my phone right here. This is the last time you'll probably be seeing this because, um, unfortunately, um, my time's up for this Boost Mobile thing. So, um, I gotta give it back pretty soon. So, uh, alright, it's Friday or Saturday, I'll give it back. Because my expiration date's done since, you know, obviously, most of you people know by now. I got this iPod thing now, so pff, this shit beats this crap by a landslide. <laughs> Anyways, um, but the internet out here is still pretty damn good, I'm not going to lie. So the first one you actually see, this is actually a, this is actually unfortunately a character that didn't really make it on the list, even though I made it on the list for nostalgia, unfortunately, um, <laughs> they didn't make it in my top five. He actually made it in my honorable mentions list, and it's Tenshi Masaki, aka for the Tenshi Muyo, Muyo series. And, um, oh yeah, one real quick note, I know you guys are used to hearing my fan a lot, but Starting tomorrow, I'm probably going to have to turn it off for a while, all the way to like maybe March or April when it starts getting warm out again. And when it stops having wet snow, because that's all we get here in Vegas is wet snow. We don't get like the real hardcore East Coast crap that like East Coast snow that the East Coast gets. And then the Midwest and the South, you guys pff, get a crap ton of like um, snow over here. We barely get any at all on the West Coast. <clears throat> but yeah, there's that, so. It's just really starting to get cold as hell in the south, so I'm probably going to have to start turning the AC on, so you won't be hearing that no more until at least March when I'm still making videos, next year, 2015. Um, yeah, but it had a good run this year. It was good. Anyways, um, Tenshi Masaki, unfortunately, didn't make it, but I'm going to read all the descriptions on the Wikia, so I'll put all the Wikia links down in the description box below if you want to check it out. And uh, for Tenshi Masuo, and I'm not going to be talking about the whole anime series, what it's all about, what it pertains to. Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? What's the motive of the whole anime series? I'm not going to get into any of those details at all. If you want to learn about that, watch the anime series yourself. Either that or go on Google. Maybe go on Netflix and rent a couple like um, seasons on there for any anime series. Or Crunchyroll. I highly suggest Crunchyroll and um, the other one. Um, AnimeNews.com. That one's really, really good as hell. And watch Cartoon Online. Definitely check them out too. They got a whole crap ton of good, badass anime. So yeah, um, Tenshi Muyo. So I'm only going to talk about their powers and abilities and their weapons that they're supposed to use. So he didn't really make it on the list because of these. I'm going to read the whole thing. If you don't want to stay here, it's fine. But if you do, that's cool. So Tenshi, powers and abilities. 
Tenchi is the most powerful character in the series, but is too young and immature to have full control of his powers. He is a com com yeah, competent swordsman and martial artist trained by his grandpa, and in the first episode, he gains possession of the Master Key, also known as the Sword Tenchi, Tenchi Ken, that can form a lightsaber blade like blade. During the battle with Kagoto, Tenchi receives a special ring from Tsunami, <coughs> or Sasami, or Tsunami, however you want to say it, that can create a Jiraibian battle suit for him. Additionally, Tenchi is capable of superhuman feats thanks to his Jiraiyan blood, but, but has only displayed his more than usual talents during his dire situations, such as his duel with Kagoto, Kagato. The escapes, oh yeah, the escapes from a black hole during the battle with Dr. Clay and the confrontation with Z. And there's a lot more, this, like this one right here. Besides his very special power of the generating light hawk wings, Tenchi is able to transform into this pure energy into matter, usually in the form of a sword, a shield, and a battling cloak, and then Tenchi's LHWs. In the final battle series of the OVA 3, Tenchi discovers the light hawk wings, which are a manifestation of godly powers and the dimensionals. In the dimensions, excuse me. The extent of Tenchi's power is unknown. At one point, they rage out of control, forcing the chosen goddesses to step in and prevent the catastrophe. And the <clears throat> and a new altered timeline where Nokia secretly secretly fired the Chomarbarian. I'm probably saying it wrong. I think it's Chomarbarian. Chomarbarian. I have no idea. It's been years since I've seen this anime. Cannon to collide with the Earth. Again, to preserve her future, Tenchi projects his light hawk wings to stop it. A total of six wings. Rather than usual, three wings he limited himself to before an event. And there's a whole bunch of other information and stuff. If you want to read the rest of it, um, put them, I'll put that in the link description below. So he's number, if I can get it, number six on the list, a.k.a. he's an honorable mention. Pretty much at this point. Hold on one second, see if I can get it. I cannot see for shit. <laughs> Alright, hold on. So number five is this kid right here. So this guy right here. Oh my lord. It's a little bit more different him. If any people watch Sword Out in Line, you know who I'm talking about. If you don't, um, I'll just guide you through it. Hold on. And this one is Krito from Sword Out in Line. And I'm reading all the wikis on here. So like I said, I'm not going to get into the anime or manga, what's about, it's a good guy, bad guy series or whatever, like who's in it, what it portrays to you, whatever its mode is, what is it makes any franchise, is it manga any good, I'm not going to talk about none of that, I'm just going to keep going with this, I might make a two part video on this, maybe, highly doubt if I don't, but if I do, y you'll know why. Okay, so Sword Online, he's level 96, his HP is 18500, his main equipment is the Anelial Blade. One hand to straight sword, secret, secret medicine of the forest, quest reward, <laughs> queen's knight sword. He has um, a lucidator, dark repulsor, and then the coast of the midnight. Then he has black worm coat, and then throwing picks. And then he has skill slots: one hand to sword, dual blades, blade throwings, parries, battle heals. He completed a lot of these um, swords over here. And then searching, tracking, hiding, he has all that, and he has night vision. And the last thing he pretty much has is sprinting, fishing, and martial arts. And then um, one-handed sword skills, you could read all these rest of them, I'm not really crazy about it. And, uh, hold on. Oh, he's able to use guns and stuff, Gun Gale Online. So, his guns are um, Ketsamigu G4, FN57, that sounds pretty badass. And outside system skills is bullet deflect so that's pretty awesome right there and uh, there's all the other ones over there you can read it for yourself like trivia and all that so another one once again I'll link that in the description below if you're interested in reading the whole wiki of Sword Online it's a lot more of a deeper description on here so yeah he was number five on the list I wasn't really crazy about his stuff but whatever number four on the list if any people have never watched this anime series I highly recommend you go watch it I actually watched it last year, and a lot of it was in the Japanese subtitles or whatever, the sub edition. I watched a little bit of the English dub. I wasn't crazy about the voice acting very much, but I did love the Japanese one a lot more. And that is Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. Oh, my Lord. 
I know you heard about me earlier this year and last year how, saying I was going to do an anime review for it. Fortunately, I never got a chance to do it because <laughs> it takes for freaking damn ever to review a whole anime series. And I really don't have time for it, unfortunately. See, if I was an otaku like I used to be, um, then you people would know how much I love this thing. And the abilities and martial arts. Hold on one second. Yeah, there it is. His abilities in martial arts, um, it's a lot of other things. I'm probably just going to talk about his martial arts. Originally, Aaron's only noteworthy trait was his natural physical strength. As he grew and joined in in 104th squad, he trained extensively in one hand-to-hand -hand combat. After additional training with Rainier and Annie, Rainier and Annie, Aaron's powers and skill set diversely, including the use of perch, punches, throws, grapplings, and submission locks. He had had the best scores for hand-to-hand -hand combat of the entire 104th graduate squad. Damn. Dude's badass. <laughs> That's all I can say. He's epic as hell. While hand-to-hand -hand fighting combat would appear useless during the massive physical, physically differences between humans and titans. Titans, excuse me. These skills definitely give Aaron a powerful edge when fighting the other titans in his own titan form. That's right, he could turn in tight form. That's humongously awesome as hell. And his 3D mover, removering gear, that's the stuff that helps him like swing left to right with those big giant mechanical medical, metal um, vines that they use. Any people that haven't watched the anime, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you read the manga for it, for that matter. And he's number three on the list. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that part. And then the last two. I can get it. Actually, no, he's number four on the list. Excuse me. Number three on the list is Yusuke Urameshi. He's really super awesome. I never really watched this anime, but the reason why I kept him on here is because I did play a lot of the games for the Game Boy Advance one. I read a lot of the manga, so he uses these things called spirit cannons. He has a demon dragon form of him that he could destroy other evil entities with, which is insanely huge as awesome as hell. Freaking amazing. Epic as hell. Definitely got to check out the anime, even though I didn't get to watch too much of it when I was younger, but it is a beautifully well-established 90s, it stands the test of time of the 90s anime. I will definitely guarantee you it's awesome. So yeah, and then number two and one is a little bit different. Number two is a little bit <laughs> portraying in my um, early teen years at the time when this came out. It was about 2002, maybe 2003 when it came out. I completely forgot when it was, but Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Oh my freaking God. What, where do I even start with him? So, um... Like I said, I'm not going to get into the, the anime and all that other stuff and the manga and the games. I'm just talking about solely their abilities. And their abilities are initially, <laughs> and see if I can get my thing here. All right. Initially, Naruto didn't display much talent in terms of being a shinobi. He was a dead last. He was dead last in the academy. Struggled with basic ninjutsu and have failed for his graduate three times. In fact, he cannot even produce a proper clone technique. He was able to create a sexy juju technique and an, an inventable but entirely useless, dis, and I cannot read that word, um, divisionary, I think that's what it is, technique. However, through sheer willpower and perseverance, Naruto managed to push past the stumbling blocks to learn. It is very difficult and complex and techniques as a late bloomer, earning his graduation by mastering the multiple shadow clone jutsu. Naruto's rapid growth during part one of enabling him to fight on par with noteworthy prodigies and skilled shinobi such as Sasuke Uchiha and Gata, or Gata, I think that's the one that did all the sand techniques, I remember him, as well as a master of several highly rank level techniques, usually within a allotted time frame. Ugh, my eyes are itching, I hate it when it happens. Alright, um, technique. Usually with a lot of time frames. Several highly skilled shinobi, including the legendary Sani, have noted Naruto's great potential. After his training years with Master Jirai for two and a half years, Naruto has developed his abilities to match an s rank member of uh, the Akatsuki. Insane stuff right there, because they're the evil guys. Upon defending their strongest, strongest members and leader of pain, Naruto was praised by the Kohana, Konoha village. Konoha villagers as a hero worthy of earning the Hokage title. By the four shinobi world 
war, Naruto's presence on the battlefield became much like his father's, which is unique skill sets, which he, which he could dramatically change the outcome of the battle, even against several cage level shinobi. After receiving the six patch chakras, he was shown capable of overwhelming the ten tails Jinjuriken Madurara or Madawara, I think that's what it is, Madara Ushiha, and even Kayugo Otsukatsukuga. I don't know, I'm probably saying it wrong, sorry if my Japanese is bad, <laughs> on separate occasions. By war's end, Naruto has been acknowledged by others to have surpassed all of the previous Hokages, despite being low in the chakra for the war, as well as holding back on their final battle, Naruto managed to defeat his old rival Sasuke, who was noted to have gained comparable powers from the Harugumoro, I might be saying that wrong, Harugumoro Otsutsukatsuki. Ultimately, years after the war, Naruto's already impressive abilities continued to improve until he eventually succeeded his former sensei, Kakashi Atada. <laughs> In the seventh Okage. And then there's seven life forces. And then it talks about his uh, nine tail fox demon transformations. And a whole bunch of other things about his parents and his family, etc. And that pretty much goes into spoilers if you haven't watched the Naruto series or Naruto Shippuden. Or if you've never even watched the, uh, read the manga, for that matter. So if you haven't watched any of that, I won't spoil it for you here. So, uh, he's number two on the list for a very awesome reason. He's a lot more badass when, when he's older, but... Till then, like he when he when he's as a kid, and his Naruto stage as a kid is not as good. And then number one on the list, um, I'm sure some of you people will know by now, especially when I do my TCG openings. <laughs> and when I say great Goku's command may away from Dragon Ball Freaking Z, um, you know what I'm talking about. Goku from Dragon Ball Z <laughs> and Dragon Ball, and even a GT series. I know a lot of people give that thing a lot of crap, but in my own personal opinion, it's a decently good anime. It's not the best, it's not the greatest thing, it's not the crappiest, most excremental, disgusting, worst anime. It's a good anime, in my opinion. The GT series. I know a lot of people give it crap, but me, I really, really like it still. It's still cool. Alright, um, see if I can find it. Super Saiyans. Techniques. Alright, Kamehameha Wave from Goku. Goku fires a Kamehameha Wave. <laughs> and I'm going to leave all the links in the description down in the description box below if you want to check these out. Goku's signature moves throughout the series. Throughout the series. Goku first learns the move after witnessing Master Roshi using it to save the Ox King and Chi Chi's castle from an inferno, but only ends up destroying it, along with the nearby mountain. Throughout the remainder of Dragon Ball, Goku continues to master the Kamehameha Wave and uses it in nearly every battle during Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT. Like I said, the K.O. Can. I used to say that a lot more too, but then I kind of stopped. Because, you know, I didn't want to make the whole thing when I pull an EX or pull out from Pokemon a TCG game. You know, I really wouldn't want to, like, make it as long as it already is. Alright, this one. Goku learns his technique after his death against Rad at 12. Training under King Kai. He uses his attack numerous amounts of times to his early Dragon Ball Z up until he has his ascension to Super Saiyan. Spirit Palm. <laughs> Spirit Bomb. Oh man, I can't tell you how many times he used to level when he used Spirit Bomb. So like, give me all your energy. Give me life forces, beautiful creatures and animals of the world. That was cool. Very epic stuff. Very epic speech from Goku overall. <laughs> I can't, I just cannot ask kiss this anime series enough. <laughs> um, arguably, Goku's most powerful technique taught him, taught to him by King Kai during the training for his upcoming battle against Vegeta and Nappa, Goku uses the Spirit Bomb numerous times, and notably against Frieza and Kid Buu. It is only against the later, against the latter that the technique actually works in the manga storyline. His instant transmission, obviously that's awesome as hell. Goku learns his technique in the planet Yardra after his battle with Frieza. Um, this technique allows him to teleport in any location so as long as he can find an energy source to go home onto. He uses this technique frequently throughout the various series and one of the most valuable abilities, Dragon Fist. He barely uses this one at all. I remember this one though. Goku uses this technique for the Hiridori again to finish him off in the 13th Dragon Ball Z movie. He also uses this in GT against Super 17 as well as Isla Shenron and Omega Shenron. 
throughout the later regenerations. Forms. Grade 8 form, I remember that. KO Cam. False Super Saiyan, which I had no idea was a false Super Saiyan one. And then uh, regular Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan um, times 10. Even bigger than before. Third grade Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan 2 is when he's even stronger than before. And of course everyone knows the Super Saiyan 3, the one where he has the long hair locks as you can see right there. And uh, I don't have the Super Saiyan God one, but um, obviously this one was only used for Battle of the Gods when that movie came out last year, when he had to fight Bills. But um, it was a real super awesome one. Goku in his childhood form. That was a real fun one for GT. And then there was another one where he was like Vegeta or Gogeta. When he infused with Dragon Ball Z, like with um, Vegeta and Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan Vegeta with Fuse. And then they have Super Gogeta. That was cool. Super Saiyan 4 was around too, the one where he turns into a monkey in GT. But some people hated that one. I actually thought it was freaking insane as hell. I thought that was going to be a Super Saiyan God form, but unfortunately it wasn't. It is what it is, you know. They risked it. Funimation, you know. Kudos to you. You still made a legendary, amazing anime series. I gotta get credit where credit is due. Shout out to those guys, because without them or Ampiplex or any of the Toonami thing, I grew up in the 90s as a child watching anime series and reading manga and being a huge otaku back then. I'm not as much of an otaku as I was before, but, you know, because I got work, exercise, and a lot of other very different errands to run in real life nowadays, but I'll still do it on the weekends or once a month when I'm off, but most of the time I'm busy as hell. I can barely even do that anymore. But yeah, I used to love the hell out of this, like, Super Saiyan stuff. I used to love the evil villains that they had and all that. I loved this, the immense awesomeness, the epicness that was Dragon Ball Z. Even though they had the other one, Blue Dragon, and um, the other video game, which I can't remember. Oh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, they had that sort of Dragon Ball Z-style artwork from Akira Toriyama. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the same dude that made those two video games, too. But with that said, these are my top five greatest... Um, anime um anime manga main character superheroes that have superpowers and weapons so hopefully you enjoy this on video i haven't done anything anime related in forever i still wanted to do that naruto he nodded thing them finally being together and the whole thing just it's no more naruto after that which is weird but it's because i still read the manga every time on the weekends but i'm not really catching up on the show very much anymore but it is what it is you know but like i always do say people peace out once again Bros, women, bro, and he's a peg sister. We'll see when I see you guys every day, every night, when we're right around the world. Don't drink smoke weed at the same time. Don't say anything reckless. Keep it calm, keep it cool, keep it chill, keep it collective, and all that good stuff. Until then, next time, guys, peace out. I'm gone. I'm getting the hell out of here. Um, I'll see you guys with the next brand new video. Definitely brand new content video almost every single day. And of course, you guys take it easy, stay safe. I'll see you on the next one. And of course, um, be safe, people. And um, I'm out. Let's goodbye, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.